Hello and welcome to another episode of Anniversary Edition. Today we are going to be talking about Wheels on Meals, which celebrates its 35th anniversary this year. Um, as always, we're going to spoil the film, so do go away and watch it and then come back and have a little listen. I'm Sophie and I am here today with Adam. Hey, how's it going? Hey. And Tom. Hello. Hello. Um, so this is a 1984 Hong Kong martial arts comedy um, directed by Sam o Hung. As always, I've pulled together a little blurb, which nice. I have to give credit to other people in the room <laughs> okay. for this one. And Tom, do you help out with this? <laughs> I love it. Okay. Um, so... A detective is tasked with finding a woman and her daughter and enlists the help of his two friends who run a fast food van. Yeah, great. That's yeah. super clean. Yeah. Right? I like it. I yeah, like, like it a lot. Yeah. Leave, leaves, the, leaves the mystery out, yeah. of the, out of it. Because it's quite a convoluted plot. It is. There's no I mean, doubt yeah. about that. Do yeah. we want to talk about, before we go any further, we should probably address the elephant in the room as to why this film is called... Wheels on Meals, rather yeah. than Meals on Wheels, which is what you'd call it accidentally every time you talk yes. about this film. Don't know what you mean. I mean, <laughs> we didn't have to retake me filming, <laughs> recording the opening about six times before I got it right. Um, it's all to do with the production company Golden Harvest, who uh, were in the 80s late 70s early 80s they they were like the big studio oh yeah one of the, they were huge and they had like jackie chan and they just you know that everything they did literally turned to gold apart from i think it was two movies uh-huh and the only common defining factor of those movies is that the titles both started with m <laughs> so they decided that was bad luck and they were never going to make another movie mm-hmm. with a title beginning with m i don't know if they ever did Hence, wheels on meals instead of meals on wheels. Meals on wheels. Yeah. So yeah. confusing. Seems so like you just confusing. come up with a different title. I know. I know. Well, because when I was just writing up the notes, I wrote it yeah. correctly. And then I was like, But you no, just say wrong. it wrong. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I retyped it because I was right. like, oh, I've written that wrong. Yeah. And I was like, wait, that's wrong. And then, I mean. I can yeah. guarantee we're all going to say meals on wheels at some point in this because it just rolls off the tongue because that's what Wheels yeah. on, on meals. meals. Wheels on meals. Yeah. I mean, wow. So it's top line a t- <laughs> <laughs> of Wheels on Meals, not Meals on Wheels. Yeah. Uh, I, I liked this film. I hadn't seen it before and I, I laughed quite a lot through yeah. this. And I liked the fight scenes. The plot it may, needs yeah. attention. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a fun little watch. But I probably wouldn't watch this on my own. No. I think it would be something that I would enjoy watching more with other people. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Top line, Adam. Yeah, I really like this film. The oh. The plot was overwritten. It, it was a combination of both being perfunctory and over <laughs> overcooked at the same time. Yeah. Which is an odd comp. You don't often get that. No. Very no, true. It's, it's, it's an interesting one, I think. We'll, we'll delve a bit more into this yeah, in, I think in a minute. But... It was way too much plot that didn't need to be there. <laughs> yeah. And most <laughs> yeah. of it doesn't happen until yeah. quite late. And you're yeah. like, well, why didn't you just start this bit earlier? Because, yeah. you know, exactly. that would help. But... Yeah. Performances, solid, Mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, I'm not sure I've seen a Sammo Hung movie before. Oh, really? Yeah, I definitely haven't. I probably have. I probably have. But I I can't remember seeing, since I've been aware of him as a name, I don't know if I've seen him in a movie, Um, but he's great. Yeah. Jackie Chan is unbelievable. Yeah. Yun Biao actually less so. I was less impressed with him. Okay. But I really enjoyed the performances here. The fight scenes were blistering and great. Yeah. yeah. Really they good. They were really good. Yeah. This mm-hmm. is this is peak Jackie Chan and the them is a so threesome. Good. And he's physical. You you if you if, well, you, yeah. if you're my sort of age or younger and you're familiar with Jackie Chan, you're not used to seeing him in physical fight scenes. No. Proper yeah, thwacking absolutely. people yeah. with his hands and his fists. You don't see that nowadays. No. Now he's all about throwing vases at people and making them catch them and then yeah. tickling, although he does do a bit of tickling <laughs> yeah. in, in this film. The, the it's thing great with, to watch. The thing with Jackie is that in most of his movies, he always plays, he's never the best person in the fight. So he, he always kind of gives himself that slight underdog position. Yeah. yeah. and Works so well. And that's where 
as he's got less capable of doing the fighting over the years, that's where the more comedic elements have come in to yeah. a greater extent. They've always been mm-hmm. there. If you watch some of the films, earlier films in this, there's there's a lot of really... I mean, it's and it is literally like the evolution of Charlie Chaplin, yeah. Buster Keaton, Harold oh, Lloyd. Yeah, it's you it's very much in that vein, yeah. And and they carry on that humour. Mm. Well, I think that's what I was so surprised about that it was so fun. Like I laughed out loud, yeah, a lot. Yeah, you it made was... some. In- we, we watched this together. Yeah. You made some interesting noises. <laughs> you were sitting there next to me, and I was expecting a few Oof, noises. Yeah, and like oh, there was one bit where you just went oh no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I didn't. Uh, you did laugh more than I thought you would. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was yeah. impressed. Um, Tom, how about you? Top line? Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of martial arts movies, mm-hmm. and this, this is one of my. I don't know. I say it's one of my favourites. I have a bit, m- an interesting kind of connection more to this movie because I remember the first conversation I had with Kieran mm-hmm. was rest in peace. Rest in peace was. Um, <laughs> him telling me that he loved martial arts movies and particularly Jackie Chan. Mm-hmm. And I said, I remember seeing one on television and I was like, I think it's set in Rome and I really liked it. It was really funny. And it was actually, and he immediately said, Oh, that's wheels on meals. Mm-hmm. And then I think within like a week and a half, he'd let me the video and I'd watched it again. Yeah. Uh, Cause I think the first time I saw this uh-huh. would have been late night channel four, they like they did a couple of weekends like and they do a Jackie Chan film late mm-hmm. at night. So I think I saw yeah. this, maybe like Drunken Master or Police Story or something like one of the other okay. bigger earlier ones. But this was the one that stuck in my mind, um, and that's the one. So that like it's it's, it's kind of yeah it's I, I think it's, it's fun to watch. Yeah, it's one of the sort of like you know early eighties Jackie Chan, mid eighties Jackie Chan is mm-hmm. is peak Jackie Chan. So obviously you saw this a while back if mm. you saw it on TV when did you first see it so I, th- I think it was I probably was um, middle teens probably okay. at school so 13, 14 perhaps and it literally would have been like I'm pretty sure I had TV in my room was going to go, about to go to bed sleep it probably would have started at like half midnight one o'clock in the morning wow that is late uh, and 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 I mean it is isn't it it is not really oh. um, and <laughs> <laughs> not really no oh. <laughs> And and I and I and it just grabbed me, so I just kept watching it. And then if I saw there was another one on, I I I think after seeing a couple, I every time I'd always double check to see if there was like a Jackie Chan movie on mm-hmm. late at night or something, because that, that's often when they would do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think after meeting Kieran, I kind of got more into it and explored it more. Bought loads of VHSs and DVDs, and have got quite a collection of Hong Kong martial arts movies now. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's because I'm I'm definitely well. I think this is probably the third, fourth right. martial arts film. Yeah, or proper martial arts film I'm, I've seen. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a genre that I ever watched when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, the first this is the first time that I've seen I think an older Jackie Chan film. Yeah. Um, I watched this earlier this week, as you say, Tom, with you. Um, but yeah, not exposed to kind of anything really. Like never known of the trio yeah. that are in this, um, but yeah, it's kind of a new-ish genre to me. But we've talked about it when we did um, Enter the Dragon, yes. which I found a surprise mm. that I actually enjoyed. Yeah, <laughs> because I love watching the fight scenes. Yeah, like the way they're choreographed is just amazing. Yeah, and the the scenes in this are so good. Yeah, I mean, it, the skill level that the guys yeah. got in this. It's yeah, just it's incredible. phenomenal. Like the three, the three of them. With the, you've got Samo, who's he's kind of like big guy, and he does stuff that like no one his size should be yeah, able to no, do. Yeah, no, he shouldn't yeah. be able to move like that. He should not be able to do what he does. Mm-hmm. So he, all of his stuff is always surprising. You've got Jackie, who is just excellent at what he does. Yep. And then Yun Biao, he's just this crazy good acrobat. He's just so. Sp- Brightly. Some of the stuff he can do, yeah. and, and I have to say, like you said a little bit earlier, this film probably doesn't show him off to his his best. There's a couple okay. of other movies. There's some movies he made with just him and Samo, yeah, that really show off. I think I showed you, you a clip of him clip. doing. Yeah, uh, of, I mean, the kids can move. There's no, there's no. Oh no, you that. have to watch this though. It's it's a clip of of Samo's doing like um, a skipping a rope. skipping rope tied to a pole. 
yeah. so the other person like when you play in school but the other yeah. person is a ball <laughs> and he's doing that and um and he's just he's doing I can't like even describe what he's and doing like cartwheels and without like missing a beat each, between each each like full circle scale. yeah it's, oh my goodness I was watching it like oh my god I can't believe that yeah it's so good yeah there's a really famous one they did together called the Prodigal Son and that's really good okay and, it, and it's one that I, I kind of like I, I love it every time I watch it I just forget that I love it and I don't watch <laughs> it that often I love yeah. movies like that though yeah when you kind of think oh I forgot I like this so much mm. Adam, how about you? When did you first see this, this film? This is my first time watching this film. Ah. So I didn't know what to expect. And I got more than I expected, mm-hmm. to be honest. Um, I didn't think you'd like it. Why? I don't know. I just thought, like when I watched, because I actually ended up, I ended up watching this twice for the podcast. Oh, yeah. Um, I, didn't, I didn't take any notes either time as well. Um, <laughs> but when I watched it back, I hadn't seen it for quite a while. And I watched it back and I was like, you know what? There's bits in it where it, it does drag a little mm-hmm. bit. Obviously, the fight scenes are amazing. I wasn't sure if you'd like the humour in it. And I wasn't yep. sure, like, maybe you wouldn't like, like the music or the style of it. Or I thought there might be stuff that you just wouldn't be your cup of tea at all. I mean, so I was really 80s. surprised. Yeah, it's I like was really surprised stylized. that you, you, you liked it. Well, for me, the, character of David, the characters of David and Thomas mm. were just so likeable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That it pulled me through a lot of the times the story slowed down a little bit. Yeah. Because I wanted to know more about them. I honestly <laughs> did. They're yeah. very, very likable guys. Like, why are yeah. they best friends? Why are they yeah. in Barcelona? Young yeah. Gal's character, David, mm. sweetest guy alive. Yeah. yeah. It, that's the, so sweet. Their roles in this are often quite typical of yeah. that. It's mm-hmm. often Jackie and Yun, and Yun is the like slightly more. I don't say Mika, but he's certainly the more sensitive. Yeah. yeah. It's like more uh, naive and Jackie's mm-hmm. a bit yeah. streetwise. A bit yeah. more arrogant, perhaps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Sam, swagger about him. Yeah. Samo tends to either be like the bully or a bit cocky or mm-hmm. like, you know. Th- they this play so well together. Like the balance yeah. of that yeah. though, just well, works so well. The, I mean, they, they all went to the China, uh, the Peking, see the, yeah, the Peking Opera School in Hong Kong. So mm-hmm. they grew up, they've know, known each other since they were tiny kids and they all grew up together and they learned singing, dancing, acting, yeah, they were martial trained. arts, acrobats, acrobatics, mm-hmm. like, you know, and they did that all together. Mm-hmm. So they, they're they more like brothers than they were friends yeah. at yeah. that point. Well, and, and it's just, it shines through in, in their rapport on screen. Yeah. Like, they they play so well. Yeah. Yeah. As a duo, particularly, but because mm. of the way this film's set up. Yeah. Um, but it's as a three-o equally, I think, when they're, when they are on screen all together. Yeah. Really interesting. Yeah. And even the plot line, which doesn't need to really be there much in a martial arts film, but very mm. much is. I found myself interested in Sylvia. Yeah. What What's she up to? Why is she out mm. in the streets? You know, she's clearly this, you know, she's a thief. I got myself into a position where I sat there thinking, is this someone that we're supposed to be trusting? Yeah. Is this mm-hmm. a good a good person, a bad person. Yeah, yeah. They do make her. Luck. They make her very enigmatic. Yeah, yeah. And it works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How? I know. <laughs> and it, it's one of those things that it's like I, I do feel there, there is a portion of it, maybe between half an hour and an hour, where it does drag quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. And they're doing a lot of. I guess it is character development. It doesn't. Yeah. It feels like maybe they could trim it a bit, but it's, well, they're yeah. developing Sylvia because. Yeah. Michael and Thomas, not yes. Michael and Thomas, David, um, David, David and Thomas, Thomas uh, just sort of, I mean, they're, what you see is what you get with them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I think I was kind of, plot wise, I found it a little tricky at the beginning. Mm. Not, not the very beginning, because I was like, oh, okay, these are like two, you know, unlikely yeah. buddies and what's going to happen, they're going to become the heroes and, you know... Um, but as soon as we kind of were introed into sort of outside of Barcelona and his dad, and I was like, what? And I'd completely forgotten the name of the That's right, woman. Yeah. <laughs> so the detective, yeah. um, well, sorry, it's, no, it's not actually the detective. It's when Samo steps in and is now the, Moby. Yeah. the detective. Um And the guy comes in and says, oh, I need you to find a woman called Gloria and her daughter. And I'd completely forgotten that we meet. A woman Gloria. called Gloria, and I it just it just completely slipped 
The, the whole like mental institution yeah. section. Yeah, that just didn't. Doesn't need to be there. No, to be right. fair. It doesn't need to be there at all. It's it's a bizarre and it's not handled in the best way. But though it does set up a really like good gag way later into the film, where Moby plays the whisper game. Oh, to right. get out of yes. a bad situation. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love that scene. I yeah. loved it. I thought yeah. it was brilliant. <laughs> the two other guys in that the. So that you know the guy, um, there's a bit where David and Thomas first go, and they get a they get a flat tire, and the the wheel nuts fall down the drain. Oh yes. And one of the patients gives them a solution as to how they can get their yeah, their, 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 this, their car going, and he he has quite a good line because they're just like how do you, how do you know that? And he's like, well, I'm a, I'm mentally ill, but I'm not stupid. Yeah. And it was kind of interesting that they made that distinction and it was like oh that's quite progressive yeah, like that and there's line. other stuff they do afterwards so you're like oh okay that's a bit tasteless but yeah. fine mm. um but him and the other guy in that scene you're talking about they're really well-known comedic actors okay and there's a group of films i think they're it's like twinkle twinkle lucky stars my lucky stars and god there's a uh, winners and sinners and there's a whole group of them where there's like there's like seven or eight of them in an ensemble movie and it's yeah. it's jackie samo uh, I think is Jackie in them. Yun's in them. Jackie's in some of them, I think, and those guys as well. And they're much more like comedy comedies. So okay. they're much okay. more like right. out and out comedies. So they're 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 kind of almost like famous cameos, if you like. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, it's um, I think in terms of like plot for me, that was a bit because I I hadn't remembered that. Yeah. I kind of thought, oh wait, what? And then when they said. When we follow Sylvia through and you see the number 62 on the door, I was like, oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah. I remember there was that this yeah. penny dropped moment and then, then you were into and the then plot. I, I kind of picked the plot back up and I was kind of back into it. But it did lose me at times because I think mm. it, I don't think it it is a particularly thrilling plot line at the beginning. No. But it's a really interesting story. Yeah, that, yeah, I'd agree with that. And I, I mean, you know, we have to also acknowledge the fact that we're watching a translation yeah. and with subtitles. Absolutely. So that does give you a bit of a little barrier occasionally. So I watched mm -hmm. the dub. You watched the dub. Oh wow! I watched the dub, and I know, I know. That's that's just oh, nice. sacrilegious. It is. Yeah. Jackie Chan's voice is hilarious. <laughs> in the dub. <laughs> hey, how's it going? <laughs> wow. Oh dear. I'm Thomas. Oh, oh my no, goodness. Bad. You watched, you've sat through that. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a host of the cheesiest, cheesiest American voices. Oh wow. dear. Bad times. Uh, but, you know. Quite often they're Canadian as well. There's a lot of a boots and A's in, <laughs> in, in Hong Kong movies. Because they got them done in Vancouver. Yeah. So, Tom, I feel like you, obviously, you've watched this way more than mm. Adam and I have. Um, what's your favorite scene? Favorite scene. Or favorite moment. There's a lot of great moments in this mm -hmm. film. There's some great comedic moments. Um, there's the bit at the beginning where they're trying to get out of their flat but avoid all of the ruckus that's going out on outside their front door. So they decide to jump off the balcony. Oh, yeah. And Jackie jumps onto the awning of the shop below yeah. and elegantly handstands, bounces down all yep. in one yeah. shot. And you're like, that's just amazing. Just and dreamy. then he signals you and Biao to jump out. And as he does, the shopkeeper whips the awning back and he <laughs> literally lands ass first on oh, the pavement. And you're just like, Oh, I don't even God. know what I said when we watched that, but I was like, oh, oh wow. Yeah. And, yeah, that, and yeah. that for me is just like, you know, that that's says something about the way they go about doing their things. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's it's just such, they do, they do everything so real. Yeah. And, you know, so stuff like that is good. Yeah. But I mean, that the final fight sequence in the castle yeah. when you've got Jackie versus Benny the Jet Akides. Mm -hmm who is this like, legendary martial artist, competitive martial artist, and then Yun Biao fighting another like world champion martial artist guy called Keith Vitale, mm -hmm. and uh, Samo just trying to avoid everybody and then ending up facing <laughs> off against, in a fencing <laughs> yeah. match against the Count, who is yeah. actually Yun Biao in a... <laughs> In, uh, in, in, a, in a fencing in mask. mask. Yeah, of course. Right. Um, oh, really? Yeah, if you look closely, there's times where you literally it's just you and Biao in a fencing mask. Okay. And it's like, okay. Because um, he, he was doing the doubling. And, and just that, and you, you switch between the narratives of the three fights. Mm -hmm. And the action in that is 
the fighting in that is just phenomenal. Yeah. It's so fast. It's so frenetic. It's so inventive with the mm-hmm. environment. It's just... That's what I really... So I think I would probably have to say that that final fight sequence for me is probably my favourite right. scene. Um, there were some... I loved the um, the very first time that we see Jackie Chan on the skateboard. Right, yes. I loved that. Doing skateboard tricks. Yeah. yeah. Doing yeah. little tricks. But I think yeah, the, the final... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I think that final sequence for me is so good. And I think it's because there's so much in the choreography of the way that the fight's put together that, as you say, it's really original. Like you, mm. It's not stuff that you're expecting in terms of the the, the movements and the reaction yeah. to each sequence. Is It's really interesting to watch. And I think mm. it's really surprising to yeah. watch. Um, and I really enjoyed that, particularly Jackie Chan and Ben and Jet. It's just... Yeah. Pff- He's, he's so fast. It's unbelievable to watch. Yeah. And I'm like, I was like, is this sped up? <laughs> yeah. Probably was a little bit. I mean, maybe a the, tiny bit. You can usually... A bit of speed ramping going on. You can usually tell when it's sped up. And I don't yeah. think mu- much of that was. I don't think much of that sequence no. was. I think there may be the occasion of it, maybe when I think... Just some slow-mo. Where, where, yeah, there's a few slow-mo's, mm. but I think there might be one bit where like, Benny like body slams Jackie. I think they might have sped that just to give mm. the impact a bit more. Of, but most of the, f- the actual fighting, yeah. I think, is actual speed. Yeah. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah. Um, Adam, how about you? Favorite moment? Or? It's the Benny Jackie fight. Yeah, mm. it's it's one of the most impressive fight scenes I have seen. Mm-hmm. It's brutal. <laughs> it's great. It, it tells is. a story. Yeah, mm-hmm. a fight scene that tells a story. Yes, yeah, uh, incredible skill. When none of them even like have characters, really. I mean, Benny's character is guy who can fight in a suit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty Do you think much. They were friends. Well, it's, okay, so there's, um, it's alleged they didn't get on that well on set. Okay. Oh. I think there was a good amount of respect between them because, I mean, Benny was a competitive fighter. Yeah. See, that's the thing about Jackie, Samo and Yun is they're not, they weren't competitive fighters. Yeah. They, they, mm-hmm. were, they were actors, yeah. essentially. Yeah. They're trained as, uh, their martial arts is part of their acting training as yeah. opposed to being for competition. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think... Because their approach is more dance like, it's choreographed and although they're making contact yeah. and they are hitting each other, it's they they know how they're interacting with each other. And when mm-hmm. you bring in someone who is a competitive fighter, getting them to find that line and mm-hmm. the rhythm yeah. is difficult. Yeah. And in fact they they're probably better off training a dancer to fight than a fighter to Yes. Fake fight, right? yeah. yeah. Um, I so that. I think there were a few moments when people got like pretty badly hit. I think yeah. Jackie, Jackie got, I think Jackie consistently got kicked in the throat in one thing they were wow. doing, and they had to kind of like you know stop, stop and, and just. I don't know if it was Benny. It might have been Keith Vitale who did that because there's a bit right. where they swap around a little bit. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. And I think there's one bit if you when when. Keith Vitale gets his comeuppance with the vase over the head from Yun Biao. You can see him slightly smirking as he falls over. And I think that's because he ended up hitting Samo with a vase. So in retaliation, Samo decided that's how his character was going to get his comeuppance. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think there was. I think it was mostly respect mm. and they probably got on okay. But I think, you know, it, from what I, I've read, the two guys, like Benny and Keith, on their off days would find dojos around and pit themselves against local martial artists oh really so like that's the sort of thing they were doing god yeah in their spare time those two are like bruisers yeah yeah they're real fighters Mm -hmm. oh yeah you can tell by watching them Mm. absolutely and i get a sense you know watching yun and watching jackie do their performance Mm. it's like martial arts meets the circus meets laurel and hardy yeah yeah um and it's a very different performance. Watching mm-hmm. Jackie fight Benny mm. is very... It's watching very two very different st- styles of performance. Yeah. Yeah. They're both fighting. And they're mm. both fighting well in similar styles. Yeah. But... You can tell the different yeah. approach. When Benny goes to punch Jackie, I'm wincing. Because I'm like, yeah. that is a professional hard punch. Yeah. yeah. I think mm. that's what makes it so thrilling, though, is that, mm. as you say, like he's a he's a bruiser. It's a he proper looks like punch. An like mm. he's so hench, he just looks like he, I mean, he would just 
yeah. annihilate we, we, anyone in a fight. We, yeah. we were saying that he just looks so compact. Yeah. Like, he looks yeah. so solid. He's like a you coiled can't spring yeah. of yeah. muscle. Yeah. yeah. And you're just like, I would not want to be. I mean, Jackie Chan is a legend of what he does. And yeah. you know, like, I mm-hmm. wouldn't want to be in his shoes, even if I had his skills. Like, well, just, yeah. I would not want to put Agreed. myself at risk. But that's a really good risk. way of thinking about it as, a, as like an artist mm. versus a fighter. Yeah. Because yeah. it, it's not, it's not the same and it's really interesting actually thinking because I guess credit to to the fight the actual proper fighters so mm. Benny and Keith. Oh, and Keith because I think that that takes more I think that would have been more challenging those fighting mm. scenes for them than it would have been for yeah. Jackie Chan yeah. Um, yeah yeah and co because it's just not it's not in their remit to you know, hold back, but still Must look be like you're... annoying your... as well, being these professional fighters, champion fighters, getting on screen mm-hmm. and losing a fight yeah. to yeah. these yeah. circus performers. Yeah. 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 yeah and, 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 you know, and having to remember that when, when Jackie makes this move, that his instinct might be to just come in with like an uppercut or a kick and, yeah. but that's not the choreography he's got to stick to whatever he's yeah. been told he has to do that, like that just stopping that instinct all your training yeah because yeah. you need to react mm. but when this you're fighting. really is jackie at peak though isn't it oh, oh my goodness his physical movements his feints you remember that yeah. that thing where he goes to faint yeah and he almost sort of springs forward in a quarter of a second into the michael jackson leaning forward pose <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> It's unbelievable. Yeah. The yeah. athleticism, the agility of mm-hmm. Jackie Chan is off the charts. Yeah. Same with Yun Biao. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, absolutely. And same with, unbelievably, Sammo Hung. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The agility of these guys is really, if you don't, if you haven't watched a martial arts movie, you won't believe it's real. Yeah. Yeah. It's, incre- it's incredible. Won't. Yeah. Watching Sammo. The size that he is, spin and pirouette away from sword strikes, yeah. mm-hmm. is crazy. Yeah. yeah, it defies physics. Yeah, watching <laughs> watching Yun Biao. I mean, even just sort of leaping out of the food truck at the end. Yeah, yeah. He just yes. looks like he's always feet, on a trampoline. Feet first. Yeah, yeah. From a, from an upright position in a small food truck, yeah. coming hurtling, unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's when you actually think about what you're watching, mm. it is kind of mind blowing. Yeah, yeah, that's what I love about it. It's like it's like that's why I love watching Buster Keaton movies because yeah. it's just like they didn't have the safety, mm-hmm. they didn't have the like the 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 knowledge of how to make that safe. Then yeah, you know they did their best, yeah. mm-hmm. and even into the eighties in Hong Kong, like because they were trained from such a young age, and they were stunt men, and mm-hmm. you know. Like, yeah, they'd use wires and stuff occasionally, but those wires were never to stop them from getting hurt. The wires were there to make the move look better or, yeah. like, you know, and it's just, just part of it. I yeah, mean, it's if for you, enhancement, not safety. Well, exactly, yeah. I mean, like, I think in Jackie Chan's book at the end of it, there's just a glossary of injuries that he's had. And you're yeah. just like, how, yeah. I mean, how he can even like, mm-hmm. barely walk is just, it's crazy. Well, I think for me, one of the things I found so interesting, because, like I said, I'm I'm not really familiar with this genre, but the Mm. more I watch of this type of film, I I kind of think I would enjoy a lot more of of the variety that's out there. But because I've only really ever known Jackie Chan in things like Rush Hour. Yeah. Yeah. And I was kind of like, obviously, I knew that this would be a comedy, but I think I was surprised at how funny I find it. But Mm. I was surprised at how watching Jackie Chan fight in this like obviously you're like you know he's at the peak which, yeah. which he clearly is but I just never in my head thought that he was ever like that I suppose because yeah. it's how you yeah. meet someone for the first time he's in your a head savage right? in this he's yeah. just unbelievable he's, he's yeah. he sheds well he almost sheds blood well like he couldn't he does, be yeah. further he does, yeah. but he couldn't be further away in no. this than the Jackie Chan I see yeah. Or I saw for the mm. first time in Rush Hour. Smacking yeah, people of ahead course. Yeah. Frying pans yeah, and you just think, oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. Stunt fighting. Yeah. But when you but, watch this, you you trace the history back in terms of the comedy. As mm. you say, Tom, you know you've got that that amazing scene at the beginning when they both wake up and it's yeah, actually they one, and they come out of the two separate doors yeah. and it's yeah. one room and you're like, oh, this genius. That's funny. Yeah. And you see how how he got to the the comedy that I saw for the first time in in Rush Hour. But yeah. when you watch it in something like this. You kind of see where it came from, and you mm. see the more organic 
yeah. tracing of, of those comedic scenes. I, I love that opening scene because it sets up David and Thomas mm. and yeah. their two characters yeah. so well mm-hmm. because yeah. you have... Da- uh, Great scene. You know, uh, David, who's just a bit more buttoned down, a bit more precise mm-hmm. and kind of, you know, does his things. And, you know, he gets out and he diligently does his... Uh, his little routine on the Wing Chun dummy, <laughs> yeah. and he's yeah. like, you know, hitting the thing like that. And then there's Jackie who's just kind of scratching his ass and kind of tr- pulling his thing <laughs> on. And he literally just goes over and goes, boom, and then just gives up and carries yeah. on. And you're just like, it just within the first few seconds, you know exactly yeah. Yeah. who's who and what, what yeah. type of people they are. And, ha- and how you're clever, because right. you don't even do it with dialogue. Yeah. 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 Like it's just all done in the physicality of mm. the character and the, and the movements. And it's so clever. Yeah. Like as a as a scene and and as a way to set up a relationship and two characters, yeah. it's flawless. Yeah, it's nice. and then Yun Biao puts his foot up on the wall and touches his nose with his toes, and you're just like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Those were the days. <laughs> <laughs> um, so favorite character? I, I'm I'm not sure. Thomas. It's tough. Thomas. Yeah. See, I kind of like Moby in this. Yeah, I I quite like Moby. I quite and I like David as well because David's just he's such a nice guy. He is a nice guy. He's got messed up teeth though. <laughs> <laughs> he had terrible teeth. Bless him. Yeah. Bless his heart. I think for me it probably goes it probably goes Moby first, then okay. then Moby Thomas. First? Moby. I just felt so sorry for the poor guy. I was like, oh come he on, is, cut he's him a break. Adorable in the, in the yeah. when you meet him. Yeah. And he like. Uh, yeah, he's a bit like a bit. He's a bit suffering of an, under this PI, and he yeah. gets to the company, and then he goes to celebrate. <laughs> And everyone gives him wine. He I goes, know. okay, but just wine. I can't get yeah. drunk. I know. Oh, well, that scene was so funny. <laughs> and he's a bit like, he's a, bit like a, a, a a nice, adorable, but actually quite annoying puppy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But, but like he, because he saves them. He helps them get out of the city and then they're in the van yeah. and they chuck him out of the van. And I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, oh, and he just annoying. keeps coming back for more. Yeah. He's annoying. They know yeah. what he is. Yeah. But he's got a job to do, you know. Yeah. I just th- really dedicated PR. <laughs> I, I, th- I think what it is is that, that, like, I feel like the relationship between them that we don't see is Moby the bullshitter who's yeah. always telling them and asking them stuff. And no- nothing's true. He's always asking yeah. favours. And then suddenly when it is, it's the boy who cried wolf. They yeah. don't believe him and yeah. that's why they give yeah. him all the, all when the crap. And it's such a classic yeah. story, it you is, know, yeah. and it's like you love to back the underdog and yeah. it's just... I yeah. I just think he's... I loved every time he was on screen. I just... I loved the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it would have to be, yeah, it'd have to be him for me. Okay. But a very close second would be Michael. Would be Thomas. Uh, Thomas, yeah, sorry. Why do you want to see Michael? <laughs> I don't know, it's weird. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Thomas is, I love how, you know, he's slightly streetwise, he's yeah. cheeky, he's keeping David in line yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. It, where, where, where David is sort of, David tries to keep Michael. Oh my God, I did it again. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Ah, oh. whilst whilst David is trying to keep Thomas motivated, mm. Thomas is trying to keep David sort of alive. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Ah, uh, uh, and <laughs> he's got some great lines as well, Thomas. <laughs> when, when he sees Sylvia. Uh, is a prostitute yeah. Yeah. and they have that scene yeah he's so funny yeah but he not is in a, funny like, not in a cheesy kind of annoying slapstick way which is again no. the way that I'm used to seeing Jackie Chan yeah no he's funny and in like a young like, like charismatic cool way, cool way. yeah he's yeah. great yeah. There's, there's the scene when so Sylvia robs them and then she comes back again and they, they have a conversation and they have to kind of address the fact that she robbed them and, yeah. and Jackie's like or Thomas is pushing David to, you do it, go on, you do it, mm-hmm. you do it, ask her this, ask her that. And David's just so sheepishly just not doing it. And yeah. every time, they almost like good cop, bad cop. And then yeah. to like Thomas just comes in and then and then she gets all offended. And and he just turns to David and says, I told you not to rake up all this shit. <laughs> he's just like, no, you didn't. And it's just that kind of like yeah. cheek yeah. that he has. And, it, mm-hmm. yeah. and he kicks ass. Yeah. yeah, he does, literally. Yeah. Tom, how about you? Who's your favourite? Did you See, say? No, I, I can't pick between them because I just yeah, like okay. I love. I, I think as characters, like taking aside all the martial arts stuff and all and everything that the the actors bring to those things, mm-hmm. like you say, like 
the, some of the stuff with Moby is so great. The fact that when the guy hiring him gives him this big sheet of paper with one like phone number on it and he assumes it's a coded message and throws yeah. water over yeah. it and trying to look for it and he has to just kind of like palm it <laughs> off as, you know, it's just like all of that stuff where like that's really good comedic stuff. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I think, you know, Yun Biao is David. He's so sweet and like naive and innocent and he just plays it so perfectly yeah. and he's just, just got like a heart of gold. Mm -hmm. And then like I say, Streetwise Jackie's always fun. And and it's very common for them to have similar, like if you watch other movies with them as a trio, yeah. you see them slot into those kind of roles. Jackie's often quite okay. the, the streetwise -y one and Yun Biao's often the, 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 the kind of sensitive one. But yeah, it's, there's a lot, a lot to like about the way they characterize those mm. characters. Interesting. Do we think there's anything that doesn't work? I think, um, from my point of view, there's some plot issues. And the fact it just ends. <laughs> I think I need to just get used to that I as a martial know, arts I thing. I don't understand the whole it just ends thing. I, I think... Well, I, there's no, there's no there's resolution a, in terms of, like, you don't... There's a very abrupt cut from the end of the big fight sequence right. into the follow-up. Where they're yeah. back in the van. But they don't really working. kind of give you much... You kind of get you glean what's happened. They don't really right. kind of explicitly but tell like you. But they I don't suppose, go and do save. Like if you made that today, yeah, they you'd see the scene where they go and save Gloria and Sylvia yeah. from the, the dungeon. All it needed thing. to be one shot, sun rising over the castle, and the five of them walking, just walking away. away. That, this isn't that's a Robert it. Rodriguez movie, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but, do you know what I mean? It's just like that one shot to cut between exactly the, yeah. the two elements. Because you, I think you don't know, like if she appears. But you don't know if she appears in court to get to claim the inheritance. You don't yeah. know. She wouldn't have to. She's just first in line. Yeah. Yeah, but she had to appear in fourteen days. To to to, to the lawyer. Yeah, I, yeah, I okay. think I think the assumption. You don't see that. The assumption at the end is that she did yeah. because of the big car and all that kind of stuff. But. And that she's chucking in the lifestyle to come and yeah. live, you know, to yeah. come and work on. <laughs> yeah, but I think it just comes van. down to the fact, you know. It's Hong Kong movie. They just want it's martial arts. The most well, yeah, the big bit. fight, the big fight's I finished, agree. and now we're yeah. done. And to be fair, from that point of view, it's great. You yeah. don't need to see anything else. Yeah, it yeah. could have just ended there. You're like, yeah. well, 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 you know, they beat the bad guys. Yeah, but it doesn't kind of. It's there's nothing neat about no. the ending. No, and I think the the mental institute thing is that doesn't work. Bad yeah. doesn't work and is poorly. It's the worst element executed. of the film for me. Yeah, um, and it's 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 tactless and it's not. Yeah. it's not handled very well. Um, in my opinion. Um, no, I'd, I'd agree with that. Yeah. And I think it takes a while to get started. Yeah. Um, I love the kind of the way that the characters are set up, but then there's like a bit of a 20 minute Dip. drag yeah. for me. Where was this shot? Barcelona. So many Asians in Barcelona. It's... Um, Apparently. It, it, it was... It was I was thinking like the institution... All Chinese. Okay, well, mm. may, maybe that in the inside bit, maybe not so much. But um, yeah, I think the majority was, was shot in Barcelona because I think, you know, I, I think it was a pretty patience. It was a pretty pretty big deal for a Hong Kong movie not to be shot in Hong Kong. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I don't know if this was even. This might. I, I'm someone out there probably correct me, but I have a feeling this could well have been one of the first. Okay. Big movies to be yeah. to be shot outside of Hong Kong. Interesting. Um, I'm not, I don't know that for definite, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was. Um, but yeah, so what really struck me was, you know, I was so wowed by the action, and it was occurring to me halfway through the Jackie Benny fight that if I was looking at these fight moves done legitimately, mm. if I was watching these fight moves in a Marvel movie, I wouldn't believe them. No. Well, yeah. Look at look at like look, a character like Scarlet, uh, like the Black Widow. Yes. Who is supposed to be like a super cool secret agent fighting chick? Yeah. She doesn't pull any of the, any of the moves. All she does I, is Hur Hurricane Rana yeah. over and over and over again. I can tell you why you won't believe it, and it's because they're not doing it for real, and you have to cut yeah. to hide the 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 fake. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I which, want to do which, it for real. Which these guys, you don't have to do mm -hmm. that. A lot of these fights you, are done in long shots, which yeah, yeah, which you know, Western action movies can't do mm -hmm. yeah. because the guys, they you know, the unless, it's a, it. unless it's a unless it's a barroom style brawl like an old Western, yeah, 
where the the American stuntmen had that nailed, then absolutely you can do that. Mm. But most Western monash that that is so highly edited. Yeah. I whereas with it, it's, more. yeah, you don't. It's, it's like dance. It's the skill. That's the thing. It's the skill. It has not to, you there. have to reach that level of skill. Yeah. I mean, my favorite Marvel film is Captain America: Winter Soldier because they have those highly choreographed tight fight mm. scenes between Cap and the Winter Soldier, yeah. where they have that whole knife play routine. Yeah. Mm. I like watching that. Audiences like watching that. Audiences like watching talented, skillful mm. things. Fight scenes speaking. involving laser beams fired at 20 metres yeah. is not as fun as no. seeing Jackie Chan do helicopter kicks. Yeah. Watching people do extraordinary things is always going to put exactly. vomit on seats. And, yep. and watching someone fly across the room when you know they're on wires, Yeah, that's not... Yeah. I mean, yeah, okay. Well, it's cool. It's a spectacle. It's, it's a spectacle, but mm. it's not like it's not physically jaw impressive. Jaw I want to be impressed. Oh my too. god, that's amazing! Yeah. So yeah. that that this re- reason why I liked Wheels on Meals that much was because of uh, that. It's the Jackie Benny fight. Yeah. It's yeah. All about it's that. so good. Yeah. But but it's there the are so many fights. Fight See, that I'm are sitting so I'm sitting here already through. making lists of movies that I need to get to you guys yes. to watch okay. because the, the the you'll just be blown away it's by the, skill, the action. Though, that's yeah. for me. Yeah. That's that's the the thing that just carries this scene. Mm. That this this film from yeah. scene to scene is just yeah, it's a circus. It's it's an absolute spectacle, and it's just such it's such a nice thing to watch. Yeah. Um. Anything else that doesn't work? Or that you guys so, find odd? I don't know. I mean, I I don't think so. When I watch a martial arts movie, I, I, I know I'm watching a martial arts movie. Mm. So I am l- more forgiving of plot. I'm more yeah. forgiving of the acting and mm-hmm. the quality of the film style and all that kind of stuff. I, I have a, a setting in my brain that allows me mm-hmm. to kind of go, yeah. okay, I'm going to ignore all of that stuff because yeah. I know that the action is going to surpass everything and yeah. I'm going to love that. And it's just about getting into that thing. So I kind of like all the things that you could turn around and say are not very good about mm-hmm. it are bits I've already switched off in my head yeah. anyway. Um, yeah. I, I, I think I said to you, I feel like I watch martial arts movies in the same way you watch musicals. Yes. In the... When you're watching a musical, it's all about the songs and the, the dancing. It's all about the musical numbers. It's all about the musical mm-hmm. numbers. And with the martial arts movie, it's exactly the same. It's all yeah. about it's the all fight about scene. The fights. Absolutely. You have to have a switch in your head. You have to be able to shift gears mm-hmm. when you put on yes. Wheels on Meals. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's the exact same switch you turn on if you're watching a Laurel and Hardy movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. the exact same switch. Yeah. I know that the delivery is going to be weird. Mm-hmm. I know the acting is going to be kind of crap. I know there's going to be a lot of pandering to the camera. Yeah. But it's all in the name of laughs yeah. and action mm-hmm. and unbelievable things yeah. Yeah. Well, going on. I kind of feel like... And it's a trade-off. It's a trade. Absolutely. Like, we've talked about this a lot in quite a few different films. I think you're, as an audience member, you're prepared to forgive certain elements if the other elements are not even good enough, better than good enough, than uh, that are, like, outstanding. Like, you'll forgive... a a dodgy-ish plotline if the acting is outstanding you know yeah. and you you it's it, it's it's i think we all have our genres that we do it more naturally in but i think it's that it's that kind of yeah the plots mm, there's issues but the fighting's amazing yeah and it's yeah. an amazing film to watch for that and it's yeah. funny yeah yeah, yeah it yeah. is funny see that it's almost it wasn't like- funny I wouldn't like it. It would be harder yeah, to I watch. was going to say, I always, find, I always <laughs> think the comedy is an added bonus. Yeah. It is, yeah. So I go in thinking, I'm going in for the action, and mm-hmm. then when it's funny, it's that's really delightful, because it's just like an extra, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm actually really enjoying well this. There are thought out comedic set pieces. Oh, for, in oh yeah. yeah. There are really? in a lot of their movies. Yeah. Really well thought out. Yeah. I mean, it's because they approach a lot of the comedy in the same way they approach the stunts. Like It's, mm-hmm. it's very well planned, and you know. Yeah. Uh, so I think, from all of us, Massive thumbs up, right? Yeah, it's a yeah. Great film. pretty big thumbs up. The, the yeah. plot line isn't yeah. isn't the best, but as a as a pure spectacle, as a, just an entertainment piece, yeah. Where are you going wrong? With yeah. Meals on if meals? You, yeah, if you want to watch an action film, watch this, and yeah. it's funny. Mm. I'd rather watch an action comedy like this than say, Lethal Weapon. Yeah, I would too, actually. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. There you go. For all you Luther Weapon <laughs> fans out there, go and watch Wheels on Meals. So, next week, we are going to be talking about Kickboxer. JCVD. Having a little uh, action. Yeah. 
We're Ten back on the we're, we're, we're just staying at martial arts flex. Should we just lean that way? Yeah. It's lean just, into the action martial arts I, vibe? I, I, it's weird because it's like here you've got massive action stars in Wheels on Meals, mm-hmm. but it's, you know, less of a traditional Hong Kong movie plot, more of a Western style plot yeah. mm-hmm. set in Europe. Yeah. Yep. Kickboxer, American martial arts movie. More traditional Hong Kong storyline <laughs> set yeah. in Asia. We're flipping the script. So, it's so, so the invert button. A little so bit. basically, we're going to find out: can 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 the Chinese do Western cinema, Ooh. and can America do Eastern cinema? Interesting. That I think is going to be fascinating. Yeah. So you've both seen this film, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So I've yeah. not seen this. Let okay. me take a look at that. Jean Claude Van Damme, obviously, yeah. supposedly. A legitimate martial artist. Wham, yeah. bam, bam, bam. He's got some pretty kicks. Yeah. There's, yeah. I mean, there's, he's a bit. He'll um, tell you he's a legitimate martial artist. I, I believe he was <laughs> certainly on, like, the Belgian karate team. I think he's, like, ha- he has a record. He has a record, yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know if it's as glorious as Benny the Jet. So I don't not. think he has any Wouldn't records so. on no. camera. This is, this is a huge problem. But, I think I was talking to you about this a few weeks ago. When you were saying that Benny the Jet is yes. the longest running martial arts champion yes. of all time. And I did say that in the 70s and 60s, there's a huge problem with martial arts. Yeah. In that you could have a legitimate fight anywhere at any time for any reason and just call up your martial arts association and say, I've had a fight. It was in the car park of a Buffalo Wild Wings and it was against... Uh, Whoever and I won. Right. It's one nil. Put the phone down. And they'd record it. <laughs> All right. Huh. And that was that that was problematic for a long time. Yeah. So you won't be able to find video footage, I don't think, of Jean Claude Van Damme no. fighting. Which is crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Major he, movie star Jean Claude Van you yeah. won't be able to find on, any record of that. On paper, I think he should technically be Sophie's favourite. Because he's he's not only was he trained in Karate. He was a ballet dancer. Uh, he was a ballet dancer. Yeah. So, in theory, he should have everything. He's got some pretty kicks. He should have yeah. everything. He does have Ooh. that. I'm not sure Kickboxer has everything. We'll find out. <laughs> uh, I remember, like, it was one of those movies because I would have been about nine when this came out. Yeah. And when you're when you're like between I guess between the ages of nine and fourteen, mm-hmm. see like back then when all you had was VHS, yeah. seeing movies that were like rated eighteen, oh, such a huge deal. So things like RoboCop and Terminator oh, and yeah. things like Bloodsport and Kickboxer, Is they Kickboxer were all the ones really rated eighteen. It, it, I think it was. What, yeah. what, what does Kickboxer have that's that uh, rated? I, uh, well, I think it was at the time. Okay. Oh, okay. I mean, sure. Violence. It prob- probably isn't now. Sure. Violence is a big thing. There's some partial nudity. The, the, um, but I don't think you get to see... The, the, the BBFC, uh, yeah, it's rated 18. Boy. Uh, it wow. used to be, strict. it used to be very strict on martial arts specifically. Interesting. Uh, there were, ser- there were, there were things like Enter the Dragon, like the Nunchucks, and there was, there was oh, oh I yeah. remember this. Yeah, so there was what a lot of things. Banned? Yes. So there mm-hmm. were How crazy is that? Two yeah. sticks and a chain. They, a banned weapon. They've they've lightened it up a lot, obviously, but when this came out, I can see why. And I th- there's a very famous scene from Kickboxer and I th- I'm not going to talk about it now cuz we'll we'll talk about it next week, but I think there's yeah. a very specific thing that would have got it its 18 rating. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so, it's not the dance sequence. <laughs> So, Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> kickboxer is kickboxer Jean Claude Van Damme, obviously a huge action star, and a lot mm-hmm. of kids around the age when we were aware and wanting to watch Kickboxer were thinking of Jean Claude Van Damme as the action star who was also a martial artist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You had like Stallone, Schwarzenegger, mm-hmm. and yeah. you had Van Damme. Yep. Yeah, I guess there was Steven Seagal as well, but he. I don't. Th- I wasn't as aware of him as I was. Me Van Damme. Yeah. I don't think Seagal, despite being undisputedly a household name, his movies, other than Under Siege, yeah, never really went mm. over. Yeah, over I here, don't I don't even think so. Name one. Well, that's one. Okay, Under, <laughs> Under Siege. 
<laughs> Under Siege 2. Yes, okay. Uh, he's an executive decision. But but his um, but the thing about Jean-Claude Van Damme is he was actually like a, you know, he fought properly and mm-hmm. Steven Seagal was more about the sort of, I'm going to use air quotes here, you know, the he did a Aikido, okay. which is... Uh, Seagal. Seagal, yeah. It's the martial art of getting out of the way. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so his martial art was not a great, like, manly, cool martial art. No. That you, like, if someone said, hey, do you want to learn how to fight, like, Jean-Claude Van Damme or Steven Seagal? Yes, well, Van Damme, please. Okay. Seagal, he does that whole, like, he's going to brush you one way and you're going to fall over. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of fake Aikido masters. A so- lot. Because it's it's one of those really subtle martial arts yeah. that okay, doesn't fine. really work, and it was developed as a way to just disarm people, right? Not to yeah. take people down, not to actually actively fight. Yeah, no, so it's, you, it's it's literally like the art of getting out of the way. It's a, it's a passive yeah. kind of yeah. I yeah. Can it, use your a, strength against you. And, yes, exactly that. Yeah. It's like a bit like judo. So people will yes. run at you. And you just sidestep them and push them over as yeah. they go past. There's that kind of thing. Winning. But, yeah. Comparing, kind of comparing that to things like <laughs> jujitsu yeah. or kung fu yes. that are actually like about, or, or even judo, even judo, yeah. which is a very effective, I mean, judo is a lot more effective than aikido. I think so. Seagal kind of sucks. Judo is also British, which I didn't know until fairly recently. Really? Interesting. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Um... Um, getting back to um, Kickboxer. Jean-Claude Van Damme, <laughs> this, like, I think the reason that it, he was so prominent is because he literally did, he was, um, he played a character in a film in 96 in, uh, called No Retreat, No Surrender. And that was kind of the first time he got a big role. And then from then on, he was literally making like two movies a year. Wow. Yeah. And, and, it, and it, so... <laughs> I'm going to go through his IMDb page. His first credit is moviegoer slash man in garden. <laughs> That's in 1979. He must have been very young there. Uh, yeah, the next one is in 1984 in a film called Break In. He's spectator in first dance sequence, uncredited. Great. Uh, and then he was in the Chuck Norris movie Missing in Action as Soldier. Right. Then he was in a film called Monaco Forever and he's credited as Gay Karate Man. <laughs> okay. Then he gets an actual role in a movie, which is No Retreat, No Surrender. Okay. And literally, next, the next year, well, 1988, he does Bloodsport, Black Eagle. They start to launch him. The following year, he does Kickboxer and Cyborg, which were, again, mm-hmm. two of his bigger ones. And then literally from then on, it's just like yeah. most of the films you would have seen the VHS yep. of. And, and like, so he, he just went from nowhere to... Huge to, just, to stratospheric. Yeah. So kickboxer. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why should? Why should we watch it? What's it about? Uh, well, I mean, the 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 premise of the film is um, two brothers who I think were separated at birth and then reconnected. I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, one of them is a, a is a fighter, mm-hmm. uh, and he decides to go to Thailand to take part in a Muay Thai Muay Thai competition, which is uh, Thai kickboxing. Okay. It's a very specific type of kickboxing. Mm-hmm. Um, and spoiler alert, gets badly injured and his brother, played by Jean-Claude Van Damme, seeks revenge. Oh, yes. good old revenge story. Revenge story. Okay. Yeah, so, so they're brothers. Uh, they, they go to pains to explain that Jean-Claude Van Damme was raised by his mother in Europe. Yeah. Right. And the other brother was raised by the father in America. Yeah. Which okay. is why they look nothing alike and have completely different accents. Of course. Yeah. That I mean, I mean at least they addressed the subject. Yeah, they you know? addressed it because yeah. I think, generally speaking, in Jean Claude Van Damme movies, they don't address it. They don't know. So that's something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that that is good something. Stuff. Thank thank God. Yeah. He really could have done with just a good dialect coach. Yeah. Just in general, so could Schwarzenegger. But yeah. Schwarzenegger was maybe part of the character, yeah. way more than Jean Claude Van Damme yeah. was. Fair. Just learn yeah. an accent, dude. Just any other accent, any other accent than the one you have. I think. I think anyone can do it. It's not <laughs> that hard. It's um. It's a. It's a very low budget film. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's. It's one of those typical eighties super low budget oh, action gosh. movies. But it. It's. I think you know the reason we're looking at it is because of that yeah. thing that I remember as a kid of it being one of those movies you've got to see it. And right. I think the reason people said you've got to see it is more bef- because of the fact it was violent. It was an eighteen, yeah, yeah. and you were younger than that, and it was so, Karate Kid as well. It, yeah, of course, it yeah. is. It's this predate Karate Kid. No, Pro- Karate Kid was eighty six. God, so 80- it rips off. No, Karate, Karate Kid, kid. was eighty four. 
now I need to go and watch it. You do, yeah. So do you, listeners. Um, He's super jacked in this film, if I remember rightly as well. <laughs> super jacked. So, go watch Kickboxer. I need to go and watch Kickboxer. Yeah. Um, and join us next week, and we'll have a more in-depth chat about it then. Thank you for listening, and goodbye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. <laughs>